Secondly, I have my pranam thousands of times at the lotus feet of my parampuru day to Srila Prabhupada and to our entire suit Rupa Guru Bhagavad and Guru Parampuru. And finally, I have my pranam to Parampuru Pad, to the Bhaktilok Paramagwati Maharaj, to Parampuru Pad, Sri Sarva Bhavana Prabhu, to Guru Pad Sri Bhaktanti Yanti Maharaj, and all the assembled Vaishnavas and Vaishnavas. auspicious occasion that is the appearance day, the Vyasa Puja day of Param Puja Pad Nittilila Pradishtu Om Vishnu Pad Ashtodra Satasri A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada Sila Prabhupada Ki Jai! It is the Vaishnava tradition that on the Vyasa Puja day of the Vaishnava, one should speak something first about Vyasa, Vyasa Dev, Guru Tattva. And then that is the Akhanda Guru Tattva, the totality, undivided Guru Tattva. And then afterwards, that is called also the Samasti Guru. Then afterwards to speak about Vyasti Guru, the, how that great Vaishnava is the individual manifestation of the original Samasti Guru. So, the speciality of Vyasadeva is 
Bhakti Yogi Nasi Sanyak Pranihite Nasi Purushampuna Yam Chattar Apasrayam. That by the mercy of Narad Guru, Srila Vyasadeh went into the Samadhi, into a trance. In that Samadhi, he saw all the beautiful pastimes of Sri Krishna. And he also saw Maya. And he saw how the living entities were. Anarto Parsamam Saksha Bhakti Yogama Dokshade Lokasya Janatomya Panishakra Satoka Samhita. They were confused, they were lost in the endless chain of birth and death. But by hearing the narration of the glories of Sri Krishna, by hearing the stream at Bhagavatam, then those living entities could be transferred from the grip of Maya to the lotus feet of Sri Krishna in Goloka Vrindavan. So Vyas, the word Vyas means diameter. A diameter is the line which touches both sides of a circle and goes through the middle. So, Srila Vyasadeva is that person who he saw the transcendental spiritual world who touched one side of the circle. And he saw the material world also. And his consciousness was absorbed on the center of everything, that is Sri Krishna. So when a great Acharya comes to this world and sits upon the asana, that asana is called Vyas Asana. And there, that Acharya he is representing the vision of Srila Vyasadeva. That is representing the uh, realization, profound transcendental realization of the sweetness of Vrindavan Bihari Lal Sri Krishna and especially the greatness of his most beloved Srimati So this is the Vyasadeva. The Guru is honored on his appearance day by Vyasa Puja. Represent, he is a representative of Vyasa. Now we'll come to the Vyasti Guru, the individual Guru himself. That is Srila Prabhupada. Our Vrindavan Das Thakura said, Ishwarera Janma Titi Yehi No Pavitra Seimata Vaishnavera Titira Charitra Just as the appearance day of Parameshwar, Supreme Lord, he is Pavitra, completely pure, <coughs> transcendental and glorious. So in the same way, the appearance day of the Acharya is not less glorious and not less purifying uh, as the appearance day of Krishna. So we will think that yesterday was Janmashtami, the appearance day of Krishna. But this day is not less glorious. It's because it is the day when Krishna's pure devotee has appeared in this world. Visrijati ridayam nayasya sakshat Tharir avasa vihito pigo ganasha Pranaya rasayana dritan ripadma Sabhavati bhagavat vardar upta See Krishna has said Oh, I am the Supreme Lord I am so powerful That just the sound of my name If someone hears it or someone utters it Even without their volition They come in touch with the name then this ocean of material existence becomes insignificant to them and they are liberated from this world. I am so powerful. But my pure devotees, they have bound me up in their hearts with the rope of love. They are called the Bhagavata Pradhan Utta. The Pradhan, the chief among the Maha Bhagavatis. So, Srila Prabhupada is such a great Vaishnava. Perhaps you know in Vedic culture, if it's your birthday, then it's not that everyone gives you gifts. You have to give gifts to everyone else. So see Krishna appeared at midnight and so he celebrates his birthday today. Hmm? That is called Nanda Mahutsa. So on this day Krishna was thinking, I have to give a gift to the whole world. What will I give? I will give the best gift of all Sri Prabhupada. <laughs> So this is the rahasya, the mystery of why Srila Prabhupada appeared on this day. Uh, now, I must admit that in my life I was not so fortunate like these great souls on this side and on this side to have the chance to see Srila Prabhupada with my eyes. But I had some fortune in my life to see Srila Prabhupada through my ears. 
How? Like Guru Dev. Sila Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj. Really, he was the first disciple of Srila Prabhupada. Hmm? He met him in 1946. 1946. Was anyone alive in 1946? Because, actually, in after the disappearance of Prabhupada Bhakti Siddhanta Thakur, there were some difficulties, some prema kalaha, we say, loving quarrels, <laughs> in the Gaudiya Mat, and they made different groups. So our Param Guru Dev, Sila Prabhupada Sanyas Guru, Param Pujapad, Sila Bhakti Pragyan Kesha Maharaj, he established in 1941 on Akshaya Tritya in Bospat Lane, Calcutta, uh, the Sri Gaudiya Vedanta Samhita in 1941. And the, on the legal documents, the founders of the Gaudiya Vedanta Samhiti were um, Sila Bhakti Pragyan Kesha Maharaj and Abhay Charanavenda Das. So Sila oh. <laughs> Prabhupada Ki So my Gurudev's, Param Gurudev's mission was co-founded by uh, Param Gurudev and Srila Prabhupada. So when my Gurudev first came to the march, then his Gurudev told him, this is Abhay Charanaravinda and he is very, very near and dear to Prabhupada Bhakti Siddhartha Sultakur. You should serve him and learn from him. He is a very learned Vaishnava. So my Gurudev always served him from the beginning. And so, some years later, I believe uh, in uh, 1959, Srila Prabhupada, you know, he was a very intelligent person and his business could have been so successful. But Srila Prabhupada heard from Srimad Bhagavatam that Yasya Hamanu Rahami Harishay Tatanam Shanai When Krishna wants to give his mercy to someone, he takes everything away. So Srila Prabhupada said, I experienced this in my life. My business collapsed. I made another business. That business collapsed. My family also abandoned me. And Srila Prabhupada became uh, homeless and he came alone with one small suitcase to Mathura and he was staying in a Dharanashala by Bengali Ghat, you know Bengali Ghat, Mathura, close to Vishram Ghat. So every day, my Guru Dev, he was living at that time in Kesha Jigodhya Mat, and he used to go down to the Jamuna to offer prayers and collect water and carry it back to the Mat. When he was there, he looked and he saw, oh, Abhay Charnavindi is here. He said, Oh Prabhu, what are you doing here? Where are you staying? He said, Oh, I'm staying in this Dharam Shala right here. So don't stay there. Come and be with your God brother. And come and stay with us in case of Jigodhya And my Gurudev took Srila Prabhupada to his room, grabbed his clothes, stuffed it in his little suitcase, took his suitcase in one hand and Srila Prabhupada in the other hand, and brought him to case of Jigodhya so then Srila Prabhupada was staying there in Kesha Jigodhya Mata and my Gurudev said he was such a charismatic person, such a jolly person, always preaching to everyone and he used to keep some chocolates in his pocket, some sweets in his pocket. So that if any child came to the mat, then he would pull one out and say, do you want a sweet? And give them a sweet so that the next day they would come back for another sweet. <laughs> It's not Anya Abhinastha Sunya, but you have to start somewhere. <laughs> so Srila Prabhupada was very expert at engaging everyone and bringing them to the lotus feet of Sri Krishna. So at that time, my Gurudev, he, though he was a junior by Diksha, but Srila Prabhupada treated him like a Shiksha disciple. And the Diksha disciple is always on a lower platform than the Diksha Guru. But the Shiksha disciple is very close, like a friendship. So Srila Prabhupada used to take my Gurudev's hand and make him sit next to him on the bed. Sit together on the bed, wooden beds in case you go in that very tiny rooms. <laughs> I stayed in the same room, actually. And Srila, Srila Prabhupada used to joke with him and they used to speak so many spiritual things. So one day, my Gurudev said, Oh, Abhay Chanavin, why don't you take sannyas? And 
Shila Prabhupada was he was he thought I know I'm not ready to take sannyas. So then my Gurudev went to his Gurudev Shila Bhakti Prakant Keshavaj and said, Gurudev, he is so qualified. He's so qualified. Why don't you give sannyas to Abhai Taranamita Prabhu? So then Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshavaraj said, yes, it's a very good idea. <laughs> and uh, actually in a dream, Srila Prabhupada had seen his uh, Gurudev, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sazori Thakur giving sannyas to him. So he knew that one day it would come. So then Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshavaraj came into the room. My Gurudev was there, Srila Prabhupada, and one old Vaishnava, very old, like maybe a hundred years old. His name was Sanatan Das, a disciple also of Srila Bhakti Sathya So Bhakti Pragyan Kesha Maharaj said that uh, I want to give sannyas. Are you ready to take sannyas? And Srila Prabhupada, he tried to get out of it. He said, I'll take sannyas when Sanatan takes sannyas. He was thinking Sanyatan, he's so old. It's too late now. Then Sanatan shocked him. He stood up, he said, I am ready. I'm ready tomorrow. But now Srila Prabhupada has spoken it. And in Vedic culture, if you say something, you cannot take it back. Like a bullet from a gun. Once it's gone, it cannot come back. So now, everything was to be arranged. And the, the day came, that is Vishwarup Mahotsav. And on that day, my Gurudev went to the marketplace and bought the sticks of bamboo and he cut them and bound them and made Srila Prabhupada, you see that danda Srila Prabhupada's holding? My Gurudev made that danda. And he took the cloth and tore it and made door open and bahirvas and uturiya and showed Srila Prabhupada also how to put it on. And then Srila Bhakti Pragyan Kesha Maharaj gave to Srila Prabhupada a mantra the Gopi Bhav Mantra. Yes. And then there was a fire sacrifice. Srila Bhaktidanta Narayan Maharaj, my Gurudev, did the fire sacrifice also. And Srila Prabhupada stayed there in Kesha Jigodi Maharaj and wrote his first book in English, which was Easy Journey to Other Planets. Because at that time, it was a big thing in the news, the Americans and the Russians were having a race. Who would be the first one to go to the moon? So Srila Prabhupada was very intelligent how to catch the imagination of the whole world with the subject they're interested in and bring them to the lotus feet of Krishna. Had anyone written a book before Easy Journey to Other Planets? Srila Prabhupada had such original thoughts how to engage everyone. But he stayed for a few months in Keshav Jigodiya and then from there he left to stay in a small room in the temple of Radha Damada because he wanted to prepare himself by doing bhajan right at the lotus feet of Srila Rupa Goswami. Don't forget this fact. In the introduction to Upadesh Amrita, the nectar of instruction, the first thing Srila Prabhupada writes is, this Krishna consciousness movement is going on under the supervision of Srila Rupa Goswami Bhattu. Sri Chaitanya Mano Vishtam Stapitam Gena Bhutalaya Swayam Rupa Kadapayam Dadati Swapala So staying there, Srila Prabhupada, he was doing very intense bhajan and he was also writing. He wrote the first three volumes of Srimad Bhagavatam, first canto there, and he was going to Delhi and publishing them. And he was writing back to Godhead magazine, only one piece of paper, with print on both sides, folded in half, makes four pages. And he used to go out and distribute that. It's very astonishing. One more good thing, oh, who is this old man? He has no money. And he's selling one in the magazine, only one piece of paper folded in half. Sometimes in the hot sun, Srila Prabhupada would faint in the street from the heat of the sun. One time Srila Prabhupada was distributing his back to Godhead and one bull with big horns charged him and bored him and he was unconscious also in the street. If you saw this old person in this condition, you will think, what is he doing? It will never amount to anything. But he was doing it because he remembered Vyabasa Yakmika Buddhiya Ekaha Kurunandaha Bahu Sakayam Tastabudya Vyabasa Hinam. 
Krishna, so he was remembering in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna said, those who are on this path are one pointed in their determination. And in the commentary of Srila Vishnu Thakur, Srila Prabhupada used to say, he has said, in this way, the disciple, the satsya, the bona fide disciple, should be completely one pointed in his life to carry out the order and the mission of his holy master, his Guru Bhagavata. So Srila Prabhupada, he did not care for the opinions of others. He was fully absorbed in the mission of his Gurudev. And I met one old Babaji, perhaps you know him, Shamananda Das Babaji. He's from the line uh, Paribar of Shamananda. And for a very long time, he lived also to be more than a hundred years. And he was staying in a little room just adjacent to the Radha Damada temple. And uh, some years before I went to see him, and he told me, I was living here in the 1960s. And I could hear Srila Prabhupada at night crying, Oh Rupa Goswami Prabhu, be merciful to me. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, chanting the holy names and calling out for the mercy of Rupa Goswami. And he was taking a broom and sweeping in front of the Samadhi of Srila Rupa Goswami. So, there's a very interesting story that when uh, Srila Prabhupada went to the West, then uh, he printed his books and he, his name was there, Srila A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada. And when my Gurudev saw it, he wrote to Srila Prabhupada in the West and he said, why have you done this? Because no Grihastha has kept their Grihastha name after Sanyas. Because your name, my Guru has given the name Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj. And you have done AC, which was his Grihastha name, Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj. No one has done it before, why have you done that? Srila Prabhupada wrote back to him. I've seen the letter. And he said, oh, when, uh, when you wrote this to me, it was like a thunderbolt on my head. What you have said is completely true. Huh? But he never changed anything. Prabhupada, it's very interesting. He said it's true, but you never. I, I, but he didn't change it. He kept A C back to that Swami Prabhupada. And there's a story behind this, and the reason is, one night, Sila Prabhupada, he was uh, resting at night in his room in Radha Damada. And he heard a voice calling, Abai Charnaravin. Hey, Abai Charnaravin. He thought, who is calling me by my household name? Now I am Swami Maharaj. Who is calling? And he got up in the middle of the night and he came out into the temple room in that Monday area of Radha Damada. He looked, he could not see anyone. Then the voice, Hey, Abai Charnaravin. Abai Charnaravin. And he followed around the Parikrama Mark. And when he came to that place, which is this Samadhi, Pushpa Samadhi of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarvari Thakur, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Thakur was standing there. Though he had left many years before, in 1938, but his Gurudev appeared to him and said, Abhay Tarnaravim, I have given you this name. Fearless at the lotus feet of Sri Krishna. Now is the time, now is the time for you to go to the West. Be fearless. And then his Gurudev disappeared. So Guru is always with the disciple. He may become Aprakat from this world. Na, na karma bandhanam janma vaishnavanam navidyate. A Vaishnava has no birth, he has no death, he has no bondage. Only like Krishna, he is sometimes aprakat and sometimes prakat, manifest. Sometimes unmanifest and sometimes manifest. So Srila Bhaktisthan Sultako became manifest to him and told him, this is the time now, it's the time to go. Be fearless. And this is why Srila Prabhupada, even after sannyas, he kept the initials A.C. Abhay Tarnaravin because his Gurudev had addressed him in this way after sannyas and gave him the blessings to preach all over the whole world. So the Prabhupada ki jai! Both Prabhupada's studies. So, during that time in Radha Damada, my Gurudev used to go to visit him and Prabhupada told him, I am going to the West. And my Gurudev said, but what will you eat? 
Because he thought maybe there's only meat in the West. How will you survive there? I said, somehow or other I will survive, but I have to go. And Srila Prabhupada said to my Gurudev, he said, I will go to the West and I'll make a hostel. And I'll invite young people to come and stay with me. And I'll cook my prasadam for them. If they don't want to eat the sattvic or transcendental ma prasadam, the sattvic forms that offered to Krishna become transcendental. He said, if they only want to eat meat, Srila Prabhupada said, I am ready. I will cook meat for them even. On the one condition that they should chant. Hare Krishna! Gurudev said, I was in shock. His determination, his nishta in the mission of his guru to bring the mercy of Krishna to all the people of the world was incredible. Once, one devotee, he was on the book distribution in India and he met an old man. And the old man was arguing with him back and forth. He wouldn't listen to anything. And then that person said, okay, if you don't want to take one of these books, then please excuse me, I'm busy. But then he looked and saw the book and he noticed some picture. And he said, let me look at the book. And then he looked and he started to cry. He started to cry. And the door said, why are you crying? He said, I knew this person. He saw the picture of Srila Prabhupada. I knew this person. His name was Abhay Charande. How did you know him? He said, once, many, many years ago, I went to spawn like a Namahat program, a meeting of devotees in someone's house. And there a devotee was speaking, and he said, The name of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu will be chanted in all the towns and villages in the world. The preacher was saying this. So afterwards, when the program was over, then he said, I was coming down the stairs and, uh, and Abhay Tarnaravind was walking in front of me. And I said, how can we believe this? What is written in Chaitanya Bhagavad? Already five, 500 years have passed and no, hardly anyone knows Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and no one around the world is chanting the holy names or anything like that. He said, who will, who will do it? Who can spread this holy name all over the world? And then Srila, Srila Prabhupada said, some fool will do it. And then he turned around to that person and he said, but not you. <laughs> so on the order of Prabhupada Bhakti Siddhartha Thakur, our <laughs> Prabhupada set out on the ship, having two heart attacks on the way. Two heart attacks. He was almost finished before he started. But he saw uh, that Matya Avatar was pulling the ship through the water as Matya Avatar saved the Vedas and brought him to Boston. And he arrived there in the Boston Harbor. I was there last year on the day Prabhupada arrived in Boston Harbor. I went there to see And uh, Srila Prabhupada he began his preaching, but he worked so hard with no results. He was trying to sell his books, going door to door. He went to New York, he was living in the slum with so many drug addicts. He was typing his Bhagavad Gita on a typewriter, and he typed a thousand pages, and someone broke into his room and stole the manuscript, and stole his typewriter as well. He, then he had to start again from the beginning. You can see his diary at that time. In his diary he wrote, Oh, today I have so many grams of dal. And I sold one book, I can buy another few grams of dal. Oh, today I did not sell any books. I am, now I have no dal left. Today I have to fast. So he was practically starving and trying to survive just by selling his books and then buying some food. And this was going on for about one year. And one day he was, he was walking on the bank of the uh, ocean, there in New York, and he sat down on a bench. And there was one old Jewish person who used to walk there and also sitting there. So Srila Prabhupada tried to strike up a conversation with him. 
So Srila Prabhupada he said to him, How old are you? Whatever, 70 something. How old are you? Oh, I have whatever, 70 something. Srila Prabhupada said, do you still have all your teeth? <laughs> that old man said, no, no, no. She said, but I have most of mine. <laughs> then the old man said, so what do you do? He said, uh, actually, I am the founder of a worldwide spiritual movement with temples all and farms all over the world. He said, really? No, not yet. But it's only a matter of time. <laughs> See his determination. So a year passed and then Srila Prabhupada he was thinking, nothing is happening. But maybe perhaps I should go back to India. Then he thought, no, let me try a little more. And so he went to Tompkins Square Park in New York. Has anyone been there, Tompkins Square Park? And there's a tree. My Guru Dev took me there. And it was not a, now it's a dirty place, there's trash everywhere. My Guru Dev came to that tree where Prabhupada sat and he gave Dandavat Pranam and, and did Parikram of that tree. He said, oh, this tree is a great soul because Prabhupada started the Sankirtan movement there. So Srila Prabhupada sat beneath that tree in Tompkins Square Park and began to play cocktails. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda. And many, many devotees, people came forward and began to dance and join the movement. And then Srila Prabhupada wrote a letter. You know, sometimes people say that the Gaudiya Mart or Prabhupada's God Brothers, they are against him. But uh, not at all. Srila Prabhupada wrote a letter to Srila Trivikram Maharaj in Devan and the Gaudiya Mart in Navadvi. And when he received that letter, he said, Oh, I have uh, started preaching and now many, many hundreds of young people in America are coming and joining the mission of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So the devotees at David and the Gaudiya Mat took the letter of Srila Prabhupada and you know in the morning you put one stool there and put Tulsi Devi on the stool and then do Kirtan around Tulsi. So they took Srila Prabhupada's letter and they put it on the stool in the middle of the temple room and did Harinam Sankirtan around Srila Prabhupada's letter. Celebrate, oh, the prophecy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is coming true, it's coming true. And then Srila Prabhupada came back to India for the first time. And there was only one person waiting for him at the airport. Srila Bhaktivedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj, my guru, was waiting for him at the airport. And brought him to Devan and the Gaudiya Mat. And he sat Srila Prabhupada on the stage. And perhaps you know when they do Parakrama in Devan and the Gaudiya Mat, how many people are there? Huh? Like 15,000 people are there. And uh, they asked Srila Prabhupada to speak. And Srila Prabhupada said, I went to New York in Tompkins Square Park and I began to play cartels and sing. Sri Krishna then a miracle happened. If there's a drain, drainage, sewage, full of stool, and there are worms in that stool, they never come out. If you take one out, they'll jump back in. But a miracle happened when I chanted Hare Krishna, the worms were crawling out from the stool. First one, and then a dozen, and then a hundred, and then two hundred. And they were all putting on tilak and shaving their heads and wearing dhoti and kurti and dancing in Kirtan. And when Srila Prabhupada was describing this, giving the news in Navadvi Dawn for the first time, Srila Prabhupada was crying and all the devotees were crying and chanting, Hari Bo! So as you know, Srila Prabhupada's preaching was so successful. I was not there. He was there. He was there. will explain everything. I cannot tell anything. Only what I've seen through my ears and telling the vision through the eyes of my Gurudev. So, 
Srila Narayan Maharaj was in India and Prabhupada was writing to him hundreds of letters, a big stack of letters on behalf. Some of them he good and gave to Satru Maharaj to make the Prabhupada Lilamrita. And uh, others we have printed as well. And Srila Gurudev was getting deities and sending them to the West, getting Madangas, cartels, and Prabhupada's favorite sweet, Mathura Peran. So, sending all these things. And Srila Prabhupada's books that he printed in Delhi, he was sending from there. And Srila Prabhupada's meeting was a tremendous, tremendous success. <laughs> Once, I'll tell you one small story. There was a devotee from Italy, and uh, he came just after Srila Prabhupada had left. But he was looking for a guru like Srila Prabhupada. So he had a guru and that guru went away. So he was broken hearted. He said, if I take initiation again, I will take initiation. I want a guru like Srila Prabhupada. So he went to Vrindavan many years later, and he met with Param Pujapad, Srila Bhakti Vaibhav Puri Goswami. And he was very impressed by that great Vaishnava. And he came to him and he said, Oh Maharaj, will you accept me as your disciple? Please, will you become my guru? And Srila Maharaj said, Why? Why do you want to take initiation? So then he said to him, Maharaj, because I want to have a spiritual master like Srila Prabhupada. Then Srila Bhakti Bhagavad Puri Goswami Maharaj said, Oh, then I cannot help you because I am not like Srila Prabhupada. An Acharya like Srila Prabhupada may come only once in a thousand years. So then he was disappointed. And seeing his disappointment, he said, I am not like Srila Prabhupada, but come tomorrow and come to But you can see how Srila Prabhupada's own God brothers, how they, so they realized his greatness also. They realized his greatness. Towards the end of his pastimes in this world, Srila Prabhupada came to Bhubaneswar and he established, he laid the cornerstone of a, of a temple. There was no temple there, it was just jungle at that time, full of scorpions and mosquitoes and snakes. And people were thinking, why does Srila Prabhupada want to make a temple here? And he told his very dear disciple, Parampujapada Srila Gaur Govinda Goswami Maharaj, to establish a temple there. But Prabhupada could see the future that Bhubaneswar would expand and all the doctors and lawyers and accountants and professional people would live in that area and it would become the center of the prestigious part of town. That came later. So at that time, Srila Gorgobindra was living in a mud hut with a straw roof that he had built in his own hands. So uh, the uh, Jaitataka Maharaj was there. He said to Srila Prabhupada, you cannot live in this mud hut. We've arranged for you a hotel in the town. Srila Prabhupada said, no, I will stay here with my boy Gorgovind. So the room was very small and Srila Prabhupada stayed together with Srila Gorgovind Maharaj for 17 days in that hut, in that mud hut. There was no temple there. Yet. And Srila Gorgovind Maharaj was hearing Harikata from Srila Prabhupada. And he said, so the Gauravind Maharaj told me that at that time, mercifully, Srila Prabhupada revealed to him his divine identity as the Dasi of Srimati Radhika, a Manjri, maid servant of Srimati Radhika. This is the realization of Srila Gauravind Maharaj, directly revealed by Srila Prabhupada. So then after that, that was the last project established in India, and Srila Prabhupada, he went to Vrindavan. And there in Vrindavan, he was now having his pastime of being old. But he's completely Satchitananda transcendental. Vaishnavas never grow old, they never die, only they have the pastime of as if they are becoming sick. Right? To increase the attachment and give chance for service to the devotees. So when Srila Prabhupada was very old and about to pass away, there's a new god brother, his name is um, Sachidananda Das. 
He is an Indian devotee, now living I think in Canada. Bengali? Bengali, yes, yes, Bengali. In Canada? Yes, I think so. I spoke to him on the phone a few years ago, I was in America and he was... Fast or... It could be. The purple is to love his kid, sing it. Yes, yes. So he was the go-between with all the Godimats. Srila Prabhupada would send him to go and bring his godbrothers. So Srila Prabhupada sent him to Keshavji Godimats in Dr. Ryan and said, Oh, bring Srila Narayan Maharaj. So my Gurudev came and uh, Srila Prabhupada at that time he was in a room, some devotees, few devotees were there, you know Bhagwan was there, now Bhagwan Maharaj from America, but he was there. And Srila Prabhupada was on the bed and in the last stages when someone is ill, they have convulsions sometimes. And Srila Prabhupada was having convulsions and devotees didn't know what to do. And then Srila Maharaj came up to him and whispered something in his ear. And then Srila Prabhupada just became completely peaceful and he was still on the bed with one leg up and one leg down and one arm back and one hand up like this. And then Srila Narayamaj turned to Bhagwat, he was a brahmachari then, now he is a sannyasi. And he told Bhagwat, he said, look, he is in ecstasy. It was not a medical problem, convulsions, he was having ecstatic symptoms experiencing the symptoms of a high brain. For many years he was hiding them from the world, but now he was manifesting the ecstatic symptoms. And Srinan Ramaj said to Bhagavad Maharaj, that look at his posture, he's in a mudra, a dancing pose. And he was in like a dancing pose, with his fingers like this, like a gopi dancing in Rasali. And then on the, just before the last day, Srila Prabhupada, he told my Gurudev, can you sing one song? Suhi Rupa Manjari Pada Siddhanta Thakur was just about to leave this world. Uh, then he asked Srila Bhakti Rakshak Srida Maharaj to sing this song. Uh, and now when Srila A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada was about to leave this world, he asked Srila Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami to sing this song. Uh, yeah, it was a Pranavananda that was Bhakti uh, Prabhupada Puri Maharaj. He stopped him and asked Srila Sridhar Maharaj to sing. Yes, tremendous. So, so Srila Prabhupada, he was becoming absorbed and he told the devotees, oh, put me on a bullet cart and take me to Govardhan. Why? Because he was in the mood of Srila Raghunath Daska Swami. Pramada Madana Leela Kandare Kandare Te Ratchati Navayuna Dwangve Masmana Mangana Itikila Kalanatam Lagna Kastad Vayorne Nija Nikatani Vasam Devi Govardhan Take me to Govardhan, I want to be at the side of Govardhan because in the caves and kunjas of Giraj Govardhan Radha and Krishna are intoxicated in their beautiful pastimes Oh Govardhan, you are the witness of those pastimes so you can bless me that I may also witness the beautiful pastimes of Radha and Krishna so Srila Prabhupada was in that mood. And at the last moment, his godbrothers were coming to see him. So at that time, Srila Bhakti Pramod Puriva Swami, he also came there at that time. And Srila Prabhupada was asking forgiveness. He said, if I've made any offense, please forgive me. They said, no, no, you have not made any offense. You have, and just, you have just tried to encourage everyone in preaching. And then, Srila Prabhupada, he said to Srila Purimaj, I have one request of you. Now this request has a backstory. What happened many years before, not many years, but some years earlier, when Srila Prabhupada became successful and so much money was coming to ISKCON, 
Then Srila Prabhupada was giving money to help his God Brothers missions. So I was just hearing yesterday from Pujapada Sarva Bhavana Prabhu how he personally took a check from Srila Prabhupada's Bhaktivedanta Swami Trust to Srila Prabhupada Bhakti Rakshak Srila Maharaji's Mat, right? To build the Natya Mandir, the dancing hall there in Srila Bhakti Rakshak Srila Maharaji's Mat. Prabhu himself went there to deliver that check. So Srila Prabhupada was helping his god brothers. So once Srila Puri Maharaj came to his country, but he would not take any of the prasadam cooked by the Western devotees. He refused to take it. But then later he wrote a letter to Srila Prabhupada, and now I want to make a mission. Can you send me some money? So Srila Prabhupada he wrote back. I would like to send you some money, but this money has come from my Western disciples. <laughs> so I think it's better I don't send it to you because uh, then you could become contaminated by that. <laughs> Srila Prabhupada was like a liar, very bold. Very <laughs> so then, in the last moment of his life, when Srila Prabhupada was about to leave this world, he could hardly move. Srila Purimaraj came to pay his respects and Srila Prabhupada, he said to Srila Purimaraj, can you do one thing for me? He said, yes, of course. Now the last request of a person who is going to leave in Vaishnav culture, in Vedic culture, you cannot refuse. He said, yes. So then Srila Prabhupada told the devotee, oh, bring some Mahaprasad. <laughs> And then that devotee came with the Maha suite of the deities. Srila Prabhupada, he never forgets anything. He said, to put much, now you take this microphone. In front of me, I want to see. Srila Purimaraj, he took that sweet bowl. And Srila Purimaraj himself said, the moment that I bit that sweet bowl, then my heart melted and I realized the importance of preaching all over the world. Srila Prabhupada Ki! And do you see after that, Srila Puri Maharaj initiated so many Western devotees, even gave sannyas to so many Western devotees, like again and again, so many of them, he was so merciful. But whose mercy was it? Was Srila Prabhupada's mercy that Srila Prabhupada put in that sweet bowl? Srila <laughs> Prabhupada Ki! And then, we know that Srila Prabhupada, he entered into the Nityalila, the eternal pastimes of Radha and Krishna. Nikunja, you know, Rati Kelisi, Yayali Be Yoktira Pachana, Tatrati Dakshad Atti Vallavasya, Vande Guru Sri Charanara Vinda, Charanara Vinda, Abhai Charanara Vinda. All glories to Abhai Charanara Vinda. He is very expert in assisting the Sakis, serving the lotus feet of Radha and Krishna. So, Srila Prabhupada went into Maha Samadhi and then my Gurudev took sandalwood paste, ground sandalwood paste, and wrote the Gopi Bhav mantra on the chest of Srila Prabhupada. And did make Prabhupada still act and chanted so many mantras and then my Gurudev on the Srila Prabhupada asked him, you put me in Samadhi and my Gurudev put Prabhupada in Samadhi. So I began in 1946 and I'm just ending in 1977. How my Gurudev he was the first servant of Srila Prabhupada and the last servant of Srila Prabhupada. So though I have never seen Srila Prabhupada, but something came in my heart through the ears by hearing from my Gurudev and from Sila Gorgavinda Maharaj. And both of them have said, some people say that Srila Prabhupada is Saka Kaur boy. But both of my gurus have told me Srila Prabhupada is a manjri following in the footsteps of Srila Rupa Goswami Prabhupada. Following in the mood of Srila Rupa Goswami Prabhupada. It's very difficult to understand, you know, because someone can say Srila Prabhupada is established in Vrindavan Krishna Balaram Mandir. So it proves that he's in Sakiras. But Sanatan Goswami Pad wrote Briyat Bhagavatam Rita, The Adventures of Gokuma, all about the coward boy. But Srila Sanatan Goswami Pad is Labanga Manjuri. When Srila Sanatan Goswami Pad was doing Parikrama of Govardhan, he fainted. And who came to revive him? Krishna and Balaram came to revive him. And Krishna touched him with his lotus hand. 
And then he told him, don't do Parkram of Gouda anymore, I give you the Shila with my footprint. Four times Parkram of the Shila, and it's the same of doing Parkram of Gouda. So in the life of Sanatan Goswami, Krishna Balaram came to him. He wrote a book all about the cowboy Gop Kumar. This is the Kshetra for Krishna Balaram. It's a tree. Yes, the Krishna Balaram tree. Yes. So and, and that, that's why he established Krishna Balaram as the main deity. Yes. Because that's where they were passed. Yes, because that is called the Stan Prabhav. The power of the place. Just behind is the Krishna Balaram tree. So Prabhupada established Krishna Balaram. And Prabhupada also said that I have in uh, Vrindavan many bridge buses, they don't understand who is Gornitai. So I have established Gornitai and Krishna Balaram to give them the impression that they'll understand that the Krishna Balaram. Sachi Suta Hoilo Se Balaram Hoilo Nitai That Krishna has become Mahaprabhu and, Nit and the Balaram has become Nityananda for this purpose. Because He no Nitai Bine by Radha Krishna Paite Nai. Without the mercy of Gornitai, we cannot attain Radha Krishna. So Srila Prabhupada did the perfect thing in the Krishna, next to Krishna Balaram tree. CC Gornitai, CC Krishna Balaram, and then CC Radha Shama Sunday. So in this way, I am offering my Shraddha Pushpanjali millions and millions of times at the lotus feet of Srila Prabhupada and pray to him that he may sprinkle his mercy upon me that I can eternally remain fixed in the service of the lotus feet of my Gurudev and all Vaishnavas. Srila Prabhupada. Yeah.